Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant Software. In this mini tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create cool looking 3D text in After Effects with real depth in mere seconds. And I'll be using Red Giant Software's Plane Space, which is a great set of tools for arranging layers in 3D space in all sorts of different ways. For example, this spheroid that you're seeing here. It's probably my favorite plugin just because it's so useful and it has saved me a ton of time in all the years that I've worked in animation. So, here I am in After Effects, and I've got some text that says 3D text, not actually 3D yet, but will be shortly. And I just want to make a few changes to the text before we jump into the real 3D stuff. So I'll choose Layer, Layer Styles, and I'll add in a stroke. Going into the Stroke Options, I'll make sure, you know what, I like the fact that it's red and it's size 3 pixels, which is perfect. Um, I don't want it to be on the outside, so I'll set it to the inside. That way my text stays the actual size that it should be. Close that up, and I'll choose Layer, Layer Styles, and I'll also add in a Gradient Overlay. And in the Gradient Overlay options, I'll jump in there, and I'll just quickly edit the Gradient for my light color there. I'm going to choose a red, not quite as bright as the red on our stroke, because I want to be able to see the actual stroke. And for the darker color, I'll just go with a very, very dark red, but not quite black. OK, click OK, and there's just one more change that I want to make, and I'll choose Layer, Layer Styles, and I'll go with a bevel and emboss. And this is almost perfect for what I want, except that I really would like the uh, bevel and emboss to not quite go past the stroke. And right now, if we go into the bevel and emboss settings, we'll see that our stroke size, our bevel size rather, is five pixels. So I'm going to set that to three. And now you can see the bevel only happens on the edges. It creates a nice sort of, like it comes out and then it kind of drops back in sort of effect. I don't know what that's called, but that's what you got. Anyway, it looks good to me. So I'm going to take this text, and I'm going to drop it into a new composition. So basically, we have some pre-comp text, which I'll explain why we've done that in a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to make this layer 3D, and I'll set the camera to the custom view so I can see this in 3D space. And I will choose uh, Window, and here's where we have all of our plane space tools. We've got our planar assistant, our pyramid distribution, matrix creator, a whole bunch of great stuff which you should check out. But for now, I'm just going to use the linear assistant light, which is one of the simplest tools that it offers. And that's what you can do is you can set how many copies of the layer and how far apart you want them. So in this case, I'm going to set it to repeat the layers, uh, let's say 30, 30 copies of the layer, and we'll set them one pixel apart. And we're going to distribute in Z space. Perfect. Click on apply, and there we go close that out. Take a quick look around it. As you can see, we've got some really nice looking text in 3D, and I can even uh, zoom in a bit, and you can see it, it really holds up well until until you turn it on its side, and then you can really see that there are all these uh, all these layers. And if, if that happens, I mean, I would never get it quite to this angle, but even over here, you can sort of start to see it break up. So you might want to uh, double the amount of layers and just separate them by half a pixel instead of a full pixel. That should probably solve a lot of the problem. In any case, um, now that we've got this, we do have one problem, which is that we've got now 31 layers instead of one. So what you can do is you can take this text composition, drop it into a new composition, and again, I'll make it 3D, and I'll collapse transformations, and I will add in uh, a new camera, doesn't really matter the settings for now, which change my view back to my camera. And as you can see, it's one layer with a camera, and I can rotate around it. And there you go. It's looking pretty sweet. Yep. Now, you may wonder why I pre-comped everything, and there's a pretty simple explanation for that. Instead of doing the text as each individual text layers here, I pre-comp them in this comp, because if I want to make a change to the text, then I don't have to do it for every single layer here. I just have to do it once. So why don't I just change that to something uh, funny. We'll go with my name, because frankly, the way people pronounce it generally makes me laugh. And, uh, and here we go. There's our text. Looks uh, just as good as it did before. And we only had to change one layer. So there you go. That's 3D text. Now, if you really want to get into the whole 3D aspects and, and uh, complex 3D projects, you should check out an episode of Red Giant TV that I've covered, and some of the material in here is covered there as well. It's called Episode 8, Creating and Working with Complex 3D Projects, and you can find that at redgianttv.com. And of course, you can always go to redgiantsoftware.com to find Plane Space. Anyway, thanks for watching. Once again, Alan Rabinowitz for Red Giant Software. See you next time.